Many of us just got a brand new iPad with this new high-res screen, and we're wondering what to do with it. Well, video is an obvious answer, but what kind of video, and where do we get this video, and how do we discover it? Well, we're going to talk to the founders of Squirrel, who are going to show us just how cool this can be. Who are you? I'm Mark Gray, co-founder and CEO of Squirrel, um, working on video discovery, trying to get people to, to discover and watch the best videos that they care about. And you're an iPad app and soon coming on iPhone, right? Yep, yep. Um, we, uh, we just recently launched our, our latest and greatest version for the iPad, uh, and we're really excited about the recent, um, recent iPad put out by Apple. But uh, we're even more excited about our iPhone version because there's a lot more iPhone ver uh, users still than iPad users. Yeah, but uh, iPad, you know, I, I talked to the guys at Flipboard, and they, they know that their usage on iPad is morning and night because yeah. it's a home consumption device. You sit on the couch with it, and you're looking through things, and you want to find a cool TED video or something. Yep. Something fun to watch, and uh, this is perfect for that. Tell me a little bit about what makes Squirrel rock and roll on this new high-res screen. Yeah, so a, a big thing for, for Squirrel, uh, one, of the, one of our major focuses has been trying to get content into our system. So we are supporting as many providers as possible. So we're trying to source the best uh, video out there, and we're trying to bring that all together into one user experience and make it really easy for users who want to discover video but don't have the time necessarily in their day to go from one site to the next trying to find whether or not they care about that video. Uh, we're bringing that all together in one place, uh, one interface, and for the iPad. The problem with this market is there's a bifurcation in, in expertise, mm -hmm. right? I know how to go around Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Vimeo and other pl other online sources to find really crazy cool GoPro videos or like there was an earthquake in Mexico City this morning and right. there was already video of that up on YouTube, right? I know how to do that. My, people like my dad are on the other side. He doesn't even know any of this video exists. Right. So how do you serve both of these uh, users and, and how do you make a great experience for both of us? Out of the gate, Squirrel really focused on curation. So in our first version, we tried to focus on the early adopters, if you will, the people that um, built people their own, like people like you, built your own playlist, build your own channel, uh, people that had lots of subscriptions to video already. Um, so the initial version of Squirrel was very focused on the early adopter crowd. And actually, you know, it's kind of interesting, but the, the, this, this version, our whole focus was trying to reach that consumer, right? The, the people that are just about consumption. So we wanted to unlock actually some of the hard work of, of our existing early adopters. Uh, they built all these cool channels of video. How, how can we get that video in front of other people and make it simple and easy for other people to get to that video? Because to your point, um, even, even sophisticated people, you might know where the video is, but you might not have the time uh, to pull it in. Um, so, I mean, even, even for myself, I, I love video. I'm watching video all the time. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I get to do that as a job. <laughs> but but um, I'm still always wonderfully surprised at what we're able to pull forward uh, in our trending section or in our fresh section, videos that I don't think I would have found if it weren't for something like Squirrel. Yeah. This is the problem with the world, right? Uh, there's 48 hours of video being put on YouTube for every minute, of yeah. the, you know? So there's no possible way we can watch every video that's out there. So we're just skimming the surface looking for fun things, or our friends will sell, say, hey, there's a cool music video or a cool funny video. And how, how does this uh, surface the best stuff? How right. Do we, how do we know we're seeing the best stuff here? Right, so the first thing we do at Squirrel is we ask you, what types of things are you interested in? Do you like technology? Are you interested in comedy? So we're trying to learn a little bit about you as a user. Um, that first step, you're also able to choose what video providers map to those given interests. So there might be specific providers in comedy. You might like Conan and O'Brien, maybe not Jimmy Kimmel. Maybe you like them both, like me. Um, and you can build, basically, a, a personalized channel guide. So once we have that, we start to understand some of your interests. We also allow you to authenticate. It's not necessary, so you can come into Squirrel and not authenticate and use the app and try it out. But if you want to sign in, you can sign in with Facebook or Twitter um, or Netflix or, or YouTube, and we create an account. If you sign in with uh, Facebook and Twitter, 
you're now establishing you know your social graph inside of Squirrel. You're you're able to follow folks that you already follow. Um, you can share directly with them, and we also create channels of video from both Facebook and Twitter for you. But um, we're looking at those social signals. We're looking at your interest graph, and we can start to make informed recommendations based on that. Yeah. One problem with with my dad. My dad knows mainstream TV. Right. ESPN, NBC, CBS, ABC. He knows that world because that's what he's watched his whole life. He doesn't understand the TED videos. He doesn't even know what those are, you know, yet. Right. He doesn't understand what Vimeo or, or YouTube or any of the online media production is. And so I think people like that get on here and they don't find maybe the CSI or the video that they are used to seeing on the big screen. Right. It, are you helping solve that at all, or are you still for this new online video type that I'm very familiar no, with and that we're creating here? No, that's why we support Netflix, we support Hulu, um, we want to support, uh, you know, we have some of the news outlets like ABC uh, and others. Um, we want to support all different types of, of content. You know, we talk about being content agnostic as well. Like, it's not just about, en you know, video is a really big, broad category. Yeah. It's not just about. Um, entertainment content. You know, we have a lot of educational talks. We have a lot of tech talks. We have, we have all sorts of content inside of uh, of Squirrel. And and really, what it is, we're trying to improve video discovery across what you're interested in. So you might be interested in all different, you know, types of of video, even beyond just simple entertainment. But we definitely want to bridge that gap. We want to help people uh, who are mainstream. Consumers. Show me some of the interests. You know, sure. I, I know tech is one of them because I I already went through the tech feed, but. Uh, just, just read me some of the in interests and uh, tell me what kinds of things I would sure. be able to, what kinds of categories of things that I would be able to see here. Yep, so um, we, we, it's alphabetically um, ordered right now. Art and design, business, comedy. We have sort of this cool blog section, so that's for maybe some people that are a little bit more familiar with online content. Culture and ideas, education, so we have you know universities. Uh, Do you have things like Khan Academy coming in here? Because he puts his videos up on YouTube, right? Right, so Anyth would anything that gets put up on YouTube, we work really closely with the, the YouTube folks uh, and their APIs, um, so we're pulling in all those different channels that are already on YouTube. Um, but we also have things like uh, entertainment, uh, extreme sports and sports. So you know we do have some ESPN content. We do have some of that mainstream content that shows up, but it's 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 smaller snack size video, not usually long form video. Right. And there's not yet any live video yet, right? Because the, the YouTube is just playing with doing a live concerts and live video hey hangouts with people. Right. This is still just uh, recorded. Uh, video that you can see on places like YouTube. And yeah, right Netflix. now this is this is recorded, um, but that is definitely something that we've uh, done a fair bit of uh, exploration on because um, one of the nice things that we can do with Squirrel is you can add videos to watch later, so you can have a watch later queue. Um, it works really well. You can imagine with with subscribing to content that may be coming up or it yeah. might be live, so we can easily notify you when it actually goes live if you want to see it. I think that's a big trend for this year. It'll be interesting to see how you fit that in, because like the Super Bowl was just streamed live for the first time this year, and more people over time are going to get used to the fact that they can watch video, especially with, I, I got the new Verizon uh, LTE iPad, so I can mm -hmm. be watching video in the airport, right? right. And I'm going to want more and more of that live uh, content that people are putting out. Um, tell me a little bit more about the UI. What what makes this so really fun to go through and maybe give me some examples? Yeah, so a big thing is, again, once you've created your personalized guide, um, we have this section called Fresh and uh, that we're really excited about. Fresh uh, pulls all the latest and greatest video from all the providers that you just selected that map to a given interest. So you have, a, let's say you selected comedy. Across comedy, we pull in all these great videos from all these different providers and make one Uber sort of dynamic playlist. Uh, it's a playlist that once you click one video, you can sit back and watch and just stream on this beautiful screen. Um, you can also use AirPlay to push it to your larger screen if you're in We'll your talk about room. that in a second because yeah. a lot of people still don't know what AirPlay is yeah. and how significant it is for this world. But. Yeah, and it's exciting because they've also updated uh, the Apple TV. So uh, if you're coming late into the market, you're going to benefit because it's a pretty nice, pretty nice experience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fresh is a big 
big exciting um, new part of what we have in Squirrel. Uh, another area is our what's hot area. So this is our, our trending section on Squirrel. We are looking at all hundreds of different providers uh, that we, we follow and then also are monitoring you know, social networks like Twitter and Facebook and seeing what's trending. Uh, and we bring that into Squirrel and serve that up uh, on a, on a daily basis. So if, a, if some video goes viral and two million people are watching it today, it's probably going to show up there, right? Right. You can see it first thing. So you'll see these videos uh, right away show up in Squirrel before other places. Uh, and what's really interesting around that, I mean, we, we track a lot of different sites. And obviously, YouTube does a lot of trending of video as well. But uh, what we found that's kind of interesting is since we also source uh, video from places that uh, play video or also have a, a community that might upvote a video on YouTube that forces it to be trending. If we track that, we kind of see that flashpoint before YouTube does. Yeah. Right. So we YouTube has a lot of tools, but they're really geeky. Uh, you know, one of the right. YouTube employees took me all through all the places that I can see trending videos. But first of all, you have to know these four URLs to go to, and not very many people know it. And it's really geeky. It's like a spreadsheet almost, you know? And this is a lot nicer to see trending stuff. Yeah, you just click a button. It's right there. What's hot? People seem to get it. It's one of the, you know, the most uh, watched areas in the site because we track everything that's going on in the app. Do you always grab the highest resolution video? Because th this new screen has more pixels than are on a 1080p video sensor. Like, the, we're using a... a you know, top line uh, Panasonic cameras that are uh, 1080p. Right. So it has more, this screen has more pixels than our sensors do. Yeah. Are you trying to find the highest resolution uh, version out there to deliver to the screen? Yeah, whenever possible. I mean, we're trying to always grab uh, the best source. Uh, we're also trying to get as much information and metadata so we understand, you know, things around the video. Uh, you know, we're always trying to pull for how long it is. Um, Know, windowing time. There's all kinds of things that we're trying to collect and data on the object so that we understand that video at, at the best of our abilities and we can serve up the best video uh, for our users. One thing I, r I like about your, uh, your app is you can uh, get a whole channel and it'll just keep playing through the channel. I don't have to hit next. Like on YouTube, I have to go to another URL and say play. Right. My kids hate, they hate you know, this. my kids love this because they just line up their uh, train videos yeah, and they right. just keep watching them and they don't yeah. have to do anything. And we have, we actually have a kids channel. It's pretty popular. Um, it's popular for, and just for my own use case. I do the same thing with my kids. And again, it's, it's just an ongoing stream. So uh, we're pulling from multiple uh, providers and creating one playlist across those different. So it's not even, it doesn't even get stale. I mean, on TV, if, if you don't want your kids, you know, looking around on, on, on cable with your remote, this is a very controlled experience. You know what's going to be in here, and it's jumping around from channel to channel, but without the jump. Yeah. Uh, it's just continuous playback. Now let's talk about airplay. We can't demo it here, but at home I have a big screen TV, a 60-inch TV, and I have an Apple TV. Either this is a Precondition, right? You need right. this little hundred dollar box. Yep. It's the Apple TV, and I just got a new one that's 1080p now. So everything's 1080p. The screen here, the Apple TV, and my TV at home. What does uh, Squirrel let me do in that situation? What, what can I do now? Right. So you can push all the videos at play. So as soon as that playlist goes, you can send that to your TV. The video stream happens on the TV. So again, lean back. It's just like watching TV in your living room. The difference is. You now have this high-powered device in your lap, and you can continue to find new videos or surf around and look uh, within Squirrel if you want to queue up a different video, uh, and you can have that experience. So it, it makes for an incredible TV watching experience that um, more people should learn about. I mean, it's, it is a great experience. A lot of people yeah. always ask us, well, how, how are you going to get Squirrel on the TV? And my response usually is, it already is on your TV. If you want to make a $99 investment, and we'll see what happens in the future uh, beyond that, but it, it, it already, uh, this, this capability exists today. Does Squirrel have a search engine at all? And because, uh, for instance, uh, Bruce uh, Springsteen gave a, an awesome talk at South by Southwest last week, and I found it through uh, uh, Twitter. Somebody tweeted it and said, right. you got to watch this video, but can I search? Now that everybody knows that, can they just search for Bruce Springsteen, South by Southwest, or anything like that? Yep. So um, you can search. We basically search YouTube and then whatever is already inside of Squirrel. Uh, what's nice about what's inside of Squirrel is, again, we support all this video from other providers outside of a YouTube. So um, you're most likely to be able to find multiple videos, right? What's also interesting about our search is 
that Bruce Springsteen video, there's a good chance that somebody like you might have saved that video, maybe put it alongside a bunch of other videos, and it's now in a nice playlist. Yeah. When you do a search within Squirrel, you not only get the benefit of finding that single video, but potentially finding a whole bunch of other really interesting videos that have been hand curated by somebody like you. Can, uh, this morning I was searching YouTube for earthquake because of this Mexico City earthquake, or uh, Acapulco earthquake right. actually. Uh, can you do new searches like that? And can you can, can it just play the latest thing automatically that gets thrown into the system? Because this would be good for a newsroom, right? Just keep uh, it playing on Apple TV and on the word earthquake or whatever. Yeah, we've definitely seen there, there's some interesting use cases out there where we've seen people have um, created their own channels of video that are just in continuous playback. Um, they seem to have something very specific, a, a topic of interest that they're playing on some sort of loop. Um, people do, but does, do that. But if uh, some kid in Acapulco posts a new video to YouTube, could it automatically play that? That's what I'm... I'm does yes, the, uh, does so the we do that whole stored search. Um, it actually, again, gets back to our roots where you could, you know, you could have a, yeah. a search be basically a channel of video for you. And it's something that um, for one of our future versions, we want to make even simpler for, for people to understand from a UI that's, standpoint. But it, it's in there right now. That's really powerful. Yeah. And I, I don't think anybody's really uh, understood how powerful that is. I mean, when Egypt was blowing up, I was at the World Ec Economic Forum, and we were all watching Al Jazeera, yeah. right? This is going to, this idea where we can put a term in there, right. like Egypt or earthquake or whatever, and watch live video or near live video get posted in and on our big screens is going to be a lot of fun. Tell me a little bit about um, your business. Uh, you know, what's, what's been happening? You're a couple of years old now. And, uh, yeah, so what we're, we're actually, we launched in April of last year. So we're not, we haven't reached. Just the, a year old. Yeah, <laughs> wow. I, I know. It's, it's, it doesn't That's feel like, like that. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that. It's dog years, right, as a startup. But yeah. um, it's, uh, we're still under a year. Um, and so, we, yeah, we're still very focused on developing the product. A uh, big thing for us is going to be getting smarter about recommendations, um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, but again, one of our big things coming up is we're pa basically taking everything we've done on the iPad and putting that on your on your phone. So we'll have a fully featured version of what Squirrel is doing for iPad users and putting it. Now, in how your do you pocket. do that? Because you know it's nice to have a big high res screen. The I iPhone is small. Yeah, so, so how do you make that experience translate from the iPad to the iPhone? Well, one of the big ways is that playlist. So if you create a playlist, you're basically taking all the work out of watching video on your phone. And uh, what we found is you know, it really makes for a unique iPhone experience for video. The fact that I can go in there and I have a short set of time, but you can maybe queue up three to five videos for me just to watch in between or in transit. Um, we think we've done that, and we've done that across providers, and you don't have to you know, play with your phone. You can just sit there and watch. It's a pretty can, nice experience. Can you ask it to, pre, to load them on the phone? For, when I was in New York, I was on the subway, and we didn't have wireless connectivity. It would have been great to have you know, five videos preloaded pre on my phone that I could watch on the subway. Can, yeah. can I we do that? We YouTube done, is no, yeah, we haven't done any downloads okay. um, for a variety of different reasons. There's, there's business challenges with it because each provider would then require different things from us. Um, so that's one of the challenges. We also just believe connectivity is going to get there. So um, you know, things have improved just with even the LTE. It's, it's getting more and more exciting. So we're kind of placing a bet that there that not to spend too much time on trying to do the downloads uh, yeah. thing. Tell me a little bit about the competitive space, because I know there's competitors. I have a few of them on my iPad. Mm -hmm. iPad. What are you seeing happen, and what, what do you think is going to be the differentiation between yours and the other guys? I think it comes down to um, what is going to be the end user experience. So are you, you know, if, if you're focused on video discovery, are you helping people discover videos that they care about? It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah. If you can do that, whoever can do that the best w will win. Um, it, it's a big category. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to be looking at this because um, if you win that, there's, there's a lot at stake for a lot of different stakeholders. So, Are you shocked that Apple hasn't jumped into this world yet? I, I keep expecting them to come out with a video discovery engine uh, like yours, yeah. or, or maybe buy a company like yours and put it on the iPad the same way they bought Siri and put it into the iPhone, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, there's no doubt. I think it's just a matter of time. The question is, well, what is it going to look like? And um, I think there's, um, you know, Apple 
is going to want to approach it the Apple way. Um, and I think that's there, there's a lot of barriers right now uh, around uh, tackling it maybe the way that they want to. Yeah. Um, but it's just going to be a matter of time. And they're building their own ecosystem. So uh, a lot of people talk about trying to reinvent the TV space. And you know, my belief has been for a long time that they're already they've already done that. I mean, just the fact that this is now a 1080p you know um, display uh, that's that this is a, the best TV in your, in your hands and it's mobile. So I, I think that they're, they've already done it to a certain extent, but yeah, the question is how do they get, how do they get bigger in the space and create a content service to match what they've done for the devices? Uh, final question, what, what do you think about Android and Windows 8, that, which I'm playing with? They, they're coming yep. with tablets that look like this and they're gonna be competitive. Are you gonna think of moving to those other pl platforms or are you gonna stay Apple only for a while? Um, you know, our, our, our core and our focus will be iOS for the near future. Uh, we've definitely, we've started to explore Android. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've talked to some of the folks at, uh, at Google and, and YouTube uh, uh, about, you know, maybe branching out into the Android world. Um, so, um, you know, it's an area that we're trying to come up to speed on and see, see if it makes sense. Um, the challenge for us is that we get great distribution on the App Store. Uh, this device is a beautiful device that's still sort of the, the lead in, in regards to the tablet form factor and, and the display and all that other stuff. So, uh, and then, you know, it, it's right now, this is a showcase uh, tablet. So we're continuing to develop for that. Close it out by telling my dad the first thing he should try here and, uh, is, you know, give him a, a sense of what the coolest feature is here or the f coolest thing to see. Yeah, I think for your dad, go in, just, you know, come in, set up what you're interested in. Uh, I love the comedy section, but he might be a news buff. I'm not sure what he likes, but tell us what he likes. Jump in and just start watching videos from, from the fresh section and, and trending. It's, it's that simple. I think, um, I think every, everybody out there will be very interested to see the kinds of recommendations and find all kinds of interesting videos that they just let us know a little bit about what they're interested in. Very cool. Where do we find it? And it's a weird, U it's a weird spelling, right? Yes, it's, it's S Q U R L, um, and you can find it on the App Store right now. Very cool. Thanks for coming out and showing it to me. It's a great app. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for having me.